Now, imagine you work for a political party and you've got elections coming up. Do you tell any journalists who ask that, A, you're going to do far better than everyone expects, B, that you're going to do much, much worse than that, or C, the truth? Have a look at this. Well, I'm quite optimistic that we are turning the corner. I mean, we've done well in real elections over the last six months or so. Well, this is the one in the cycle that's always one of the challenging set of elections. There's a lot of seats up around the country. I think we're going to make ground in London. Uh, I'm hopeful we can make a gain in Manchester. Uh, we will come out with net gains, I think, uh, at the end of the council elections when the counting's done. We're predicting uh, that uh, because these were high watermark years when the seats were la last fought in 2014, uh, that it's probably going to be difficult to get anything like You're as close as... You're downplaying expectations, well. Andrew Gwynn. <laughs> no. Well, time will tell whether those politicians were answering A, B or C, as I read them out, but they were probably all engaging in, in what's known as expectation management. You might not have heard of it, but my guests here in the studio have Giles Kenningham. He used to work for the Conservatives and Aisha Hazarika. She used to work for the Labour Party. Think of them as recovering spin doctors. That's why you look so well, the two <laughs> exactly. of you. Life is obviously so much better. Life is good, yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what is, what goes on when you're sitting there in the war room, gaming, the next election, do you go out there and go for A, B or C? I think actually for the Tories this time it's about how do you play Lib Dems and UKIP into the equation. So UKIP could face total wipeout uh, during these elections and Lib Dems doesn't really seem like they're going to have that revival despite being a pro-Brexit, uh, pro-Remain party uh, in London. So that's where you want to shift it. But yeah, look, it does go on uh, and I think also what's crucially, crucial this time is what happens on the night. How do you set the tests for the opposition? Mm -hmm what are the questions on social media and also what happens the next day. So it's almost about who doesn't say something as opposed to who does say something. The Tories will need to move the conversation on quite quickly, I think. Right, so how does it work, expectation management? Well, there's normally a big row about it behind the scenes. Good. And all the special <laughs> advisers get together and then the, the small group of politicians who are tasked to sort of be the, the key political, you know, the, the Andrew Gwynns or whoever, the James Cleverleys, who will be out on the night doing all the, the media rounds. And there's almost quite a tussle between the head of communications and the um, the head of communications normally wants to, you know, go out and, and, and do quite low expectation sort of management. And there's often, I remember one um, election, a local elections thing, when we had sort of agreed not to give any figures out and then a senior politician went out and briefed numbers <laughs> and that's fatal you don't want to pin yeah. yourself to numbers right so take the Labour Party in this election uh, they should have a stunning night on uh, Thursday they're set to do very very well particularly in London so they're almost trying to do quite a, a, a necessary sort of playing down mm. expectations and Giles is correct when he says the test is often set by the opposition party so for example in London Wandsworth and Westminster are being seen as the the key measures of success well, or failure on either side and on that basis historical context basically right yeah. but on that basis of Wandsworth and Westminster I mean is it going to be the case if you were doing the narrative now mm. would you be saying if we hold on to Wandsworth and Westminster it's been a fabulous Fabulous night for the Conservatives. Well, that's what they. That's what is sort of being said, really. Yeah, but I think you've got to look at the overall context. What would propel Labour into power? And you see, use comparative narratives here. Also, look at the backdrop here. Incumbent governments don't do well uh, generally. Uh, you know, we've got a backdrop of cuts. We've got a backdrop of austerity. That's where you want to be spinning it in terms but of the narrative. But the interesting thing is, local elections are very rarely the things that determine what happens at the next general election. Well, especially if it's a long way so off. Take last time, so 2014, Labour had a stunning night. We gained 300 seats, we gained three councils, and actually that helped feed the narrative that probably Ed Miliband was going to be on course for Downing <laughs> Street. And we all know that sort of didn't quite work out the way that everybody had planned. So I, I think you have, to, you have to take this with a, a healthy pinch of salt or a salt mountain, really, in terms of the narrative about what this kind of means for the general election. But I think ultimately they do matter in terms of getting boots on the ground, getting activists there who can create those community networks which do propel MPs back into power. Right. I mean, how much of a risk is it when people, or if people think it's all done, it's all in the bag? It's a huge risk. You've always got to elevate the risk of the opposition getting in because otherwise people don't go out to vote. Yeah, have, it's a huge thing. Have you got any examples of where your narrative worked, where you thought about it, you'd rowed about it, you finally agreed on something and it worked? I mean, mine, it. mine would, be the, would be the general election 2015 where the whole SNP Labour mm. narrative mm. took over, 
dominated the airwaves. If we hadn't elevated the risk of Miliband getting in, there'd have been more focus on our policies, and you see the and different election. And it was that was very damaging. I was very yeah. damaging. And actually, the one phrase that everybody remembers that that David Cameron said so powerfully was, "Under Ed Miliband, there will be chaos." And of course, we now look at what's happening in the country and think. Oh, the irony. So, um, I mean, I remember from the Labour point of view, one of the things that... Because, of course, you have these calls that go on through the night as well, or in various staging posts. But I remember one set of elections where we thought we would hold the seat in Bradford, and mm. George Galloway won it, and that was literally like a bolt out of the And I remember having, that, having that conversation with my old uh, boss, Eric Pickles, we were like, the problem for Labour is they didn't see it coming. It wasn't the fact they'd lost. And that comes down to these, election mat these elections matter of having boots on the ground. Right. Well, do you shudder listening to all of this, or does oh, it fill your heart with joy ahead it's of Thursday? Funny, isn't it? Because I'm a new MP, so you think it's not going to be like the thick of it, but then conversations <laughs> like this, I think it might be. Is they it like the thick of it? Is it like the thick of it? I'm learning. On steroids. I'm learning. I mean, I think the thing for me that is really important is also expectation management of the membership. So the Lib Dems mm. have doubled the membership that we had two years ago. It's their first set of, of big set of elections post post the general. A lot of them, it's the first time they've gone door knocking. So yeah, we need to also manage what the expectations. What do you perceive? success on our For us, morning, I mean, yeah. we should make we should make gains, but whether or not it's going to be... Oh, I know. I'm, no, no, I don't even know myself. I'm hoping locally that we'll make a couple of games. Ah, but, but we'll you're, see. you're doing my job for me. Yeah. That's great. Come on, <laughs> give us the numbers I then. don't have them. <laughs> yes, but can you see the dangers of giving predictions? Absolutely right. And, and actually, I'm a pessimist when it comes to campaigning. Even in my own win, I did not believe it until they said it. Until you have the votes in the bag, Everything is to play for. You haven't won until you've actually won. But the, the Lib Dems are going to be interesting on the on the evening because you know it will be interesting to see. It's whether a rare thing from a Labour the, spin doctor. The, the Brexit Former. vote, you know, whether the the, the kind of anti-Brexit narrative is cutting through, um, and also where the UKIP voters are going to go because although we've seen the collapse mm -hmm. of UKIP, there's still a lot of people that hold UKIP views, and are they going to go to the Conservatives? So that, the and is. are they going to go? Or are they going to go come to? to, to you Labour? think that's where the story is? Well, I think obviously the media are going to try and frame it as a two-horse narrative, but you could. See UKIP uh, annihilation and a fate of the Lib Dems to bounce back. Well, then it would be a two. But, listen, it would be a two. But, but also, in a sense, if Vince Cable does not come back in London, he's got to be toast. He's got to go because you're in the most pro no, Remain part of the country. No, no one's, no one's thinking on. that, actually. No, no. In the current climate against Labour, with the massive, uh, massive campaigning power of momentum, actually, we, we're managing our own expectations about what will We should gain some seats for sure, but I don't think we're necessarily but expecting got to, be the benchmark to gain councils for you guys, or whatever. Surely, I think the problem is that no, 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 no. so. Labour, Labour so. is so strong in London. Mm. I mean, the, yeah. there's no doubt. You know, it, every political analysis will kind of say that, that the Labour vote is, is, is going to be... So, I mean, there are some what, there are some areas where the entire but council is, could be completely... Yeah. There is Labour, a wild Every card. single council seat could go there, Labour. Right. Well, that's a risk for the Conservatives, isn't yeah. it? If there's wipeout for the Conservatives yeah. Yeah, I think if they in lose, London. If they lose all of them, obviously you've got Wandsworth, you've got Barnet, mm. you've got Kensington. If they lose all of them, yeah, it's not great. I think the, the challenge for the Conservatives is how do you move the conversation on afterwards? Yeah. And there is do a you wild... let this be hung around your, your neck like a noose. Right. I mean, you talked about... Um, sorry, Aisha talked about Labour being very strong in London and yeah. you said there have got to be some gains. Do you accept it could be very hard in London? I think it's going to be very hard everywhere. Um, we've got a very polarised politics right now, which actually makes the centre ground a really difficult place to be because as soon as you say, if you vote Labour, you're going to get the extreme of the Tories or vice versa, it actually makes the centre ground very difficult. Right. But there is a wild card here, which is EU voters. And this is potentially the last election that EU voters can vote in. And actually, that's where we're focusing. Well, that's where you're pinning your hopes, isn't it? We're going to talk about this in a minute, so let's not steal the thunder of the next or whenever it is discussion we're going to have. Um, journalists persuading them they know what you're up to we all know what you're trying to do in terms of telling us what the narrative is so is it very difficult to persuade cynical journos oh absolutely you know I, I pity the Labour press office right now who will be having to ring people saying you know what we might not have that good a, a, a night in, in in London it might not be that good and everybody's like come on and I noticed actually Andrew <laughs> Gwynn at the weekend was sort of trying to downplay uh, some of the and it looks so obvious I think yeah, the only way you can do it is historical context and third parties there was a YouGov poll out last Week, which said Labour were going to get 50% in London. I do think for Labour, if you're going to want to be the party of government, you've got to really take this election by storm. Right. It'll be huge gains. Well, Giles and Aisha, we have to end it there, but you can sit back and watch, can't you? Well, on, I'll be commenting on, on this. Oh, all right then. <laughs> You'll be contributing. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>